Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. You can mic's on. We can hear. Um, my name is Emma Foley. Uh, this is my colleague Abhijit Sinha, and uh, Gabriel. You will not be joining us uh, this afternoon or this morning. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, barometer and service assurance in OPNFE, and also some additional use cases that are coming up as we progress the work. So we'll be looking at use cases beyond service assurance as well, specifically in testing and performance. <clears throat> so uh, first of all, I'll talk through barometer to date and what we've done around service assurance, what's the project and where we're looking to move to during the next uh, release cycle. Then we're going to look at how it started evolving beyond service assurance and look at two use cases, one with the bottlenecks project in OPNFE and another one with network services benchmarking, both of which use the yardstick framework. So we're going to have to talk about that a little bit as well. Time permitting, uh, we do have some demos and after that, we may talk about, speculate about uh, new directions for barometer and where we're going to go with what we have available. And then I'll open the floor to questions. So, start up with uh, barometer. And start with the motivation behind the project. Um, so, why do we need service assurance? Basically, because we're becoming more and more dependent on data centers everywhere. And when a data center goes down, it costs like, a whole lot of money. This is an old figure, but yeah, something like a million bucks for a few hours. So you want to make sure that your data center stays up as long as possible. And as we move towards um, NFE, this is going to become more and more important because that figure is only going to go up as we run more critical workloads um, and as we have more and more demands for um, uptime for service assurance, basically for not having your services interrupted at all. <clears throat> so basically a fixed function appliances are going to be replaced by um, virtual services, uh, we're going to have to up our game and look at, <clears throat> excuse me, and look at ways to maintain the same level of service assurance, quality of service and uptime that we had when we had those physical network functions. Um, yeah, basically we need to provide the same level of service assurance as we previously had. And in order to do this, it's vital to monitor those systems and services for malfunctions that will cause service disruption and downtime. And initially, when you're talking about uh, OpenStack and as a, our vim of choice initially, what we had in OpenStack was the ability to monitor, monitor services and virtual resources. So there was quite a gap there in terms of actual platform level monitoring because it doesn't really matter if your services are up. If the platform goes down, you're screwed, really. Um, so that's the gap that we're trying to fill when Barometer came in. So what is Barometer? Um, it is an OPNFE project for platform service assurance. And it is a requirements project. So most of the development done in Barometer is actually um, upstream to Collect-D, which is a system statistics collection tool. So we provide a bunch of plugins to Collect-D to allow you to monitor your platform more in depth, but also to monitor some vital software applications that are critical with NFE. So for example, some of our plugins are monitoring DPDK, OVS, and oh, hang on, that's up here. Um, OBS, uh, a lot of platform level metrics as well. So not only can we get metrics about the virtual compute networking and storage from OpenStack well, initially, um, we can also get physical compute network and storage metrics as well. And working together with uh, various different projects within OpenFE and within OpenStack, 
we can increase the alarming capabilities in whatever upstream projects you're using, uh, metrics collection capabilities as well. Um, so while we collect a load of metrics and create um, read plugins to get the system metrics into Collecti. We've also done some work getting those metrics out of Collecti and into higher level fault management systems. Um, whether that's through existing interfaces and protocols like SNMP, or whether it's through uh, software orchestrators, um, things like OpenStack, Kubernetes, ONAP, or whether it's moving on to emerging analytics systems and Basically, there's a flexibility there that if you want these metrics, they can be made available in whatever system you're using. Um, does anybody have any questions at this stage? Everybody's following it. Anyone used uh, Collect D before? I think we have two people or everyone else is just too tired to raise their hands. Um, but basically, if you want to continue using your legacy monitoring systems, because Collecti has been around for like 10 plus years, it has over 100 existing plugins. If you want to continue using that, you can. We're just helping to modernize it a little bit and make those same metrics available to your orchestrators, your mano layers. Uh, so the next few slides are a few of the plugins that we've made available and what versions of DPDK they actually landed in upstream. Um, so the DPDK Stats plugin was the first one that we created. It allows you to monitor DPDK-based applications and get metrics about your performance. Um, this is using the DPDK extended NIC statistics API uh, built into, into DPDK. So a lot of these metrics were already available either from the platform or from the software they just needed to be um, gathered by Collect-D. So um, you can monitor RAS, reliability, availability, serviceability metrics. Um, a lot of those are events. So if there's been a machine check exception or there's actually been an error on your platform, um, we can expose that, say, okay, we found an error. We tried to correct it, we passed, we failed, but now you know that there was actually something going on. Um, Intel Resource Director Technology, so that's cache monitoring, cache allocation, memory bandwidth monitoring, and memory bandwidth allocation. So you can get um, metrics about the cache usage. So that's uh, useful when you're trying to detect things like noisy neighbor and quiet this noisy neighbor. We've done, I think, a few demos with the Watcher project in OpenStack um, on this particular use case, and also with the Vitrage guys as well. So that would be detecting a noisy neighbor when a, an application starts to thrash the cache and actually figure out some way to, to fail over, to quieten that noisy neighbor, uh, whether it's by migration or whether it's by assigning new levels of, say, um, cache quality of service. But the important thing there is you can actually detect it in order to be able to prevent that fault that would uh, degrade the service. Um, huge page pages monitoring. Uh, that's I know that's kind of handy when you're using a DPTK backed application and several other features. Uh, you can get metrics as well from the vSwitch. That's OVS, whether you're running DPTK or vanilla OVS or whatever data path you are using there. Uh, we also did some uh, events based plugins that would. Um, emit notifications. So that's uh, very useful in monitoring and responding to faults. Um, DPDK events, we made some modifications to Libvirt as well to give you um, more information on what's actually happening in your virtual machine. Um, I think that did um, bring up additional information that was already there, just not exposed to Collect D. Um, PMU, that's um, more in-depth um, processor metrics. That, is, that one is specific to Intel. Um, of course. Um, we expose the metrics from IPMI, so legacy management interfaces. 
and PCA, PCIE errors as well. Uh, those last two are, there are pull requests open, they just haven't been merged into master, but as soon as they are, they are available for anyone to pull down and use. We did a few write plugins, so SNMP to let you talk to uh, legacy systems. So if you want to ease that transition into NFE, you can take small steps and integrate new features into your existing toolchain. Um, we have metrics exported to Nyaki, which means they're actually available in OpenStack. And it's untested, but technically, if you're using OSM, you should be able to get these metrics as well as they do use Gnocchi. If you want to try that out, let me know how it goes. Um, A, so, um, or AODH, depending on what you're more comfortable with. Um, that pushes notifications into A to allow you to work with any application that already integrates that uh, alarming engine. We also have a VES application, which is the interface into ONAP. So that relays the metrics from Collect D into VES, um, into DCAE in ONAP. Um, so if you want to use the metrics from there, you're, you have the ability to do that. Um, what comes up next for Barometer. Um, as we're moving from the Fraser release to the Gambia release, we're had a little bit of an existential crisis because we didn't know where to go next. Do we do more plugins? Do we do, say, Prometheus support as well? Uh, do we move on to analytics use cases? And we're welcoming input on that because it really depends on how people are using Barometer and what they're actually interested in doing with the metrics that we're collecting. But uh, we're always open to anyone submitting new plugins to Collect D. And if you want anyone to, say, review the pull request before the Collect D maintainers have to critique it, um, we, do, we, do help. Um, we do help with uh, reviews. Um, we're talking about things like Collect D cloudification. Because today, Collect D, um, it's been around a while. It predates NFE. It's designed to be put on a platform or a few platforms. If you want to reconfigure it, you have to restart it. So we're looking at ways to get Collect D more suitable for large scale deployments uh, because we are collecting metrics sometimes at millisecond intervals. So we do not want any break in that collection. Uh, so we're working with the DMA project, so Distributed Monitoring and Analytics. They have a, a few tools that they think we might be interested in to help make this happen. So that's coming up, hopefully, in the next release. And we're always open to collaborations. So as I said, existential crisis. We do not know where people want to go with this. So if you have any ideas, we're pretty friendly people, so uh, um, whatever you're interested in, we'd be more than happy to help. Um, we have collaborated before on a bunch of different use cases, say um, fault detection and um, failover, say um, noisy neighbor use case that I mentioned before, and I actually have a list at the end because I've forgotten all the other wonderful things we've done. <laughs> So basically, going forward for Barometer, we want to enable more services to consume the data in telemetry. We want to make more data available depending on what's actually useful for people. And we want to look at more use cases consuming these metrics, such as orchestration management, governance and audits, testing and benchmarking, analytics, and so on. <clears throat> so on that, uh, there are also, there are are already a few different projects consuming these metrics outside of service assurance. And this is something I found out when I started working on Yardstick a few months ago. So we're gonna talk about Yardstick first because it is the, okay, it's the infrastructure verification project in OPNFE. 
um, which may put some people off because they're like, I don't want to do that, um, or not necessarily concerned with it. But more than that, Yardstick is actually a, quite a flexible test framework. And it just doesn't just do verification, but you can also use it for performance testing as well, which is where barometer comes into the mix. Oh, hang on. Um, I forgot I had that slide. Um, so Yersic is used quite widely in OPNFE for many different use cases. For example, uh, for HA testing, uh, resiliency testing, um, performance analysis. I think uh, storage performance tests use it as well. Um, we also use it for some of the infrastructure verification. It's used in the gate in OPNFE to actually make sure that things are functional. And um, what Abhijit's going to talk to you about in a little bit is actually how we're using it for performance um, benchmarking and characterization of NFEI and VNFs, which is coming up right after we talk about bottlenecks. This part, unfortunately, is going to be brief because Gabriel couldn't join us today. Um, but the bottlenecks project um, uses Yardstick and uses and collects performance metrics from Barometer to do data plane throughput testing, multi-stack storage tests, um, sample VNF scale-out tests, data plane silk tests, and VIM management tests um, with regards to life cycle. Um, these are some of the metrics they find particularly useful for these kind of use cases. And um, the reason that they decide to use Barometer is because it's quite easy to install um, in a distributed and isolated manner because during the last two cycles, we did a lot of work building a reference container. So you can just pull down the Docker container, put it on your system, and you don't have to worry about build artifacts, especially if you're doing something like um, short-term performance testing or you're collecting metrics from within, within a VNF. So for some cases, you may want um, additional data for a short amount of time. And then you want to let your VNF continue to do what it's supposed to do without that, um, those additional build artifacts being left in the system. So the bottlenecks project quite like this. You could cleanly remove barometer when you were done with it. Um, we do provide a lot of reference configurations as well. So that's quite handy if you want to um, get started with a ton of plugins without having to tune each one of them individually. And well, Collect D was designed to have a very low resource consumption within your system. Um, you see the, the motivations for adopting Barometer um, was because they wanted uh, insights into doing root cause analysis. Because they do some long duration, some soak testing, you want to be able to understand the behaviors over time in your system. And you want to be able to to look at it and figure out where the performance bottlenecks actually are. Um, oh yeah, they want to also measure long-term stability as well in the system. And what they're using at the moment to do this visualization is they've used Barometer with C-Advisor and Prometheus to actually do container monitoring as well as the VM monitoring. So hopefully um, the bottlenecks guys will be helping us get the Prometheus support into Barometer coming up in the next release. And obviously one thing that's very attractive is the Grafana integration as well. Um, typically we, we have showcased Barometer with InfluxDB, so that has native support for for Grafana, and actually we have a bunch of reference dashboards as well, so you get all the metrics already configured, which takes a lot of the tedious selection and tedious building of dashboards out of it if you want to get up and running quite quickly. And so that's all I have for barometer and bottlenecks at the moment, so I'm going to hand you over to Abhijit to talk about network services benchmarking for NFEI and VNF characterization. Yeah, thanks, Emma. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Abhijit. I am working as a technical lead in Intel. And I have been working with OpenStack and Yardstick for almost two years now. 
So this part of the presentation is telling how we do network services benchmarking for VNF and NFPI characterization. So what is network services benchmarking? So NSB is, or in short, NSB is a benchmarking and a characterization tool for your VNF and NFPI characterization. It automates your test cases using, using, using test configuration parameters and it gives you KPI, various KPIs at the end. It gives you a deterministic and repeatable benchmark for NFPI and VNF, which you need, because if you have multiple runs of, that, of a test, the results should not be different, right? That's the end goal here. Uh, so what NSB brings in, in Yardstick is uh, a unified fashion of seeing all your metrics, and we'll go through in the later parts what kind of metrics we are showing. It's basically network, VNF, and application. So generally when you run a test case, you get some metrics. You don't get all the metrics to the same place. So what NSB is trying to do is when you benchmark, you get all the metrics in one place as a Grafana dashboard. You can see the results, you can correlate, you can do analytics after that. It's up to the user what they can do. But this is an enhancement in the OPNFP Yastic framework, uh, which we have done uh, here. So what makes NSP tick? So it is, it, NSB is not just Yastic. We are using Yastic for putting the test frameworks. We, we are using the automation of, uh, through Yastic to automate the test cases. But since we do uh, benchmarking of VNFs and NFPI, we need a reference VNF. So we come up with a new project of sample VNFs, uh, which have a reference workloads, like a firewall, CGNAT, ACL, and on which Yards NSB writes the test case or, or upstreams the test cases in Yardstick. So through Yardstick, you can run the test cases on the sample VNF workloads and get the KPIs. So Barometer is a project which uh, we are looking forward for using for NFPI KPI collection. It is, uh, it is pretty mature enough now. It has a lot of features, as Shama just mentioned here. And you'll be leveraging all that feature. And it will bring us a standardized way of uh, getting the KPI rather than using our own installation of CollectD, which is a ver version mismatch. Uh, it's if you're installing on the host, because Barometer gives you a container installation, you can just remove if you want. If you just So the system is basically clean. So we'll bring in all the advantages of that. So a lot of open source components here. If you see an NSB, like OPNFE is one of them. We use DPDK, DPDK applications. Uh, all the reference workloads which are in the OPNFE sample VNFs are uh, based on DPDK. Uh, we use Influx in Grafana in Yardstick, also, so which is useful for storing the results and displaying the results uh, in Grafana. So this slide gives you a complete overview of what uh, what is the open source and standards used in NSP? So on the, on the right, on, on the top uh, uh, left, you see it's using OPNFE community, which I just showed now, that you're using Yastic, sample VNF, parameter project there. And then at the bottom, it's, it's the standards which is needed for benchmarking and characterization your applications. Uh, it is ET, ETC, ETC being, being ETC compliant, IETF compliant, which give you the standards for RFC 254, 3511 for firewall, for example, just to, just to mention a few. So we take the test methodologies and KPIs from the standards, and we use the Yastrik project and the sample VNFs and parameter for from open source community. And at the end, it's a, it's a the end goal of NSB is we, we we do all the work and we upstream it. So and and ask the users to use it for a consumption and give feedback on it. That if you need some other some features for your benchmarking applications or or your hardware from an FEI point of view. We will, we will inco incorporate those changes. So the benchmarking environments which NSB gives you is a bare metal, a standalone virtualized, and a managed virtualized. In this case, I mentioned heat here, but it can be any, any orchestration, Kubernetes also. So for bare metal, what happens in this, this, this kind of an environment, which is a, all the three environments are basically NFPI context here. Uh, that means your application is running on a bare metal environment or it's running on a VM, which you have provisioned using libvirt. You have done the core pinning and all the optimizations you have done, selected the best data paths like SRI view or OVS DPDK, and you can get the results. The third part is the managed one, which I think most of the people are interested here because uh, so we are using OpenStack Heat. So what Yasky does is through test cases, you can define what, sample, what, what images you, are, you want to use, which is already provisioned with your application. And you can decide what flavor you want, what networks you want. And what 
Yardstick does it. It just parses all the information and uses the heat, heat Python client and creates the templates and creates the instances. So everything is automated there to the test case. The NSB scope, this is important here because what NSB brings into picture here is we are using one tool for your VNF and NFVI characterization. So we use, we use sample VNF called Prox, which is a very lightweight application, which is, uh, which is in the sample VNF repository in OPNFV. And it can be configured as a traffic generator and an application. So there is no DPDK driver uh, version mismatch or some, something mismatch happening here because the same application is used as a generator and as a workload and it's been being very lightweight. And there are all the test cases in OPNFV, which in Yardstick through you can run and you can characterize your NFVI environment. Then you can also go a little bit higher than go to the VNFs, like you use firewall, router, you can go to a PNG or EPC, whatever you want. You can, you, you, there, are, there are some sample test cases to just show how to use the framework. And you can also benchmark and characterize those VNFs. So it's the same tool doing both the jobs here rather than going to multiple tools. Another interesting part is about the KPI. So we do all the work of writing test cases, automation, uh, and then what we need at the end and everybody needs is the KPIs now. So three kind of KPIs which NSP exposes is the network given by the traffic generator, can be a packets in, packets out, throughput, latency, and then it gives the NFVI KPIs. Now, the NFVI KPIs are the platform level KPIs, which comes from your host, where your application is running, and then the VNF KPIs. The VNF KPIs are completely application dependent. So if, I do, if you are using a firewall, then firewall will have its own connections per second, how many concurrent connections you are making, those kind of KPIs. So that has to be exposed by the application. The test framework of NSP will use CR6 test framework to just pass those results and display and store in the database so that you can, you can see it. And also, so VNFs, apart from the application-specific KPIs, VNF will also use some cores, memory, something. So all that can be, can be, can be captured. So how a barometer comes into picture here is all the things in the red, you can use parameter or collect D for getting the metrics here. So rather than, rather than using uh, separate tools here, so we can use parameter here to get that. Now VNF vendors, depend on, depending on the VNF vendors, uh, the, 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 the last part may or may not be present because it, sometimes the VNF vendors use their own collection agent so in that case, we need to, we need to just pass the, uh, the data output from there. So NSB and barometer, why we use, or why we are going to use barometer in this case is, I would say, because of the clean installation and a lot of, lot of uh, work has been done on storing the metrics, pre-created pre -create, pre dashboards, because there's a lot of work when you install a software and, to, and you see the results at the other end. There are a lot of steps in between. So barometer has already covered most of the things here for us. So it, you don't need to uh, worry about the collect D version because if you install on your host, it's very messy. You, you, you can't do a clean installation. Use, if you use barometer, it has a container installation and it's all the plugins already there. So we just install it using the containers and we, we want to delete or you want to remove, it's, it's com completely up to you. Also, it's very difficult to install a collect D in an uh, OpenStack cloud environment. Sometimes the clouds won't give access to go and install something on their compute nodes. So what you need to do in that case is you can do a separate installation of barometer collect D and you can use a network plugin. So you don't, need, you don't need to access the compute nodes using SSH. You can just use the network plugin and all the data, uh, which, is, which is all the metrics which are getting generated in the com compute nodes will be coming out through the, through the network plugin to the jump host where you are running in FluxDB. So all that advantages uh, barometer brings when we use uh, with NSB. So anything, any, so, so all the improvements so for, for, for barometer we can, we can consume here and also we can motivate some VNF vendors probably so that they can use it. So that it's a, it's a generic API which everybody can use on the standard hardware so that we can get the metrics here. Next we have some demos. So I don't know how we are doing on the time. Uh, but 10 minutes. Uh, first demo was how to install Barometer, but I gave that at FOSDEM this year, so if you want to look it up, you can check that out. The second demo is, I should be here. The second demo is NFVI, NFVI and VNF characterization with NSB, but we're running, running that on the Intel booth 
So if you want to see that, we'll be there between 11.30 and 2 today. Okay. Continue. You want to go through this? Or? I've gone through it. <laughs> so. All right. So, so yeah, so all the, all the things which I was talking about, NSB is, I can show you live, uh, where we have, a, we have a demo booth uh, at, an, at the Intel Marketplace. Uh, so I, I can go through all the things, how, how the metrics is getting collected, how the test cases are there, how we can configure the test cases uh, to suit different conditions, like the changing the traffic parameters, the tolerated loss, and all those things for a RFC 2544K. Also, we've Grafana enabled as well, so you can look at some pretty dashboards, which seems to be why a lot of people are coming over because of that visual element to it. Yes, and one more important thing is, like, you don't have to, if suppose the test is running for three hours. You don't need to wait till three hours to see the results. You can just see when the test is running in the background and the live kind of a screen. So that gives you a live visualization and you can do an early stop or early uh, success criteria. You can tell that, okay, this is what I want to achieve and I'm already getting it. So I don't need to wait for three hours. So that's another advantage. Any questions on any of the topics? Guys? Yes, um, would you mind stepping up to the mic first? Thank you. Uh, for the NFEI characterization, uh, how, how would you deal with the scalability? Uh, 5, 10, 50, hundreds? So uh, through NSP, we have tests for scale up and scale out. Now for an for a, for a, for a, uh, OpenStack kind of a VM environment, scale up basically means you're adding more resources to the same instance. And that means you have to every time undeploy your stack and create a new test case with more flavor or more parameters. And then you can run the test case and see the results. For a scale out kind of environment, what we do is, again, I'm talking from a VM point of view, not containers point of view, because scale out in containers is very simple. But from a VM point of view, what we do, what, what we have test cases for in NSP is you can run multiple instances of the same application and you can see how your application is stressed and you get a characterization report at the end. Do you have uh, metrics on uh, storage speeds, uh, block or? or uh... So for what we have at the moment for our NFVI is network. So it's network NFVI characterization at the moment. But we are working on adding memory, storage, and I.O. and enhance it to cover all the NFVI aspects. There are some generic storage metrics available as well already in Collecti, but uh, may or may not be the kind of depth of detail that you're looking for, but it's worth checking out. Uh, hi. You mentioned uh, you use DPDK. Uh, do you use any kind of uh, test framework for DPDK, and what kind of coverage it has it, uh, like from the API perspective? Uh, Is it from a metric collection point of view or a test case point of view, the question? Uh, test case point of view. OK. So, for example, if you are doing a VNF characterization, we have a sample VNF repository in OPNFV. Uh, there are uh, applications like ACL or a CGNAT firewall there, which are, which are built on top of DPDK. Uh, so if you are aware of DPDK IP pipeline, they are kind of a DPDK IP pipeline based where you, where you allocate your course to do certain tasks. That's how you build a pipeline there. Uh, so all those, all those applications are configured using the test cases. So test cases is the place where you can tell, okay, I, I want this application to do something for me, like change a parameter here for number of flows, how many flows. So you have a traffic generator where, where you will tell that I want, suppose, some 64-byte packet size with how many flows, and try to stress the system, the application. So at the end, where, when you, whenever CollectD or parameters, uh, containers are running on the host where your application is running, it will collect all the metrics and send it back to the database. But that this database uh, uh, will, will, will highlight all the metrics in Grafana dashboard to you. So we have all the metrics there. We don't actually develop DPDK. We just consume it as a library, so we don't need to test it as early because we assume that the DPDK guys have already done that. And one more thing I would like to say is when we are working on NSP or Yastik, we are trying to use as much open source components as possible rather than maintaining ourselves as a personal library. So we don't do any modification to any of the things. And if we need a help, we just do the right way, like go to the community and tell this is a problem we are facing. And it helps everyone, more users, more help, so more stable software. And if you guys have any more questions, 
Um, I didn't put in any links for the other wikis, but the barometer wiki is above on OPNFE. So it's got a lot of information there. But if that's still not enough, you can contact um, any one of the project teams on the OPNFE mailing list. And guys, any question on the benchmarking of, uh, of, of NFVI or VNF, just come to the Intel booth. I will be happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.